Numéro 9, Youssef Dawafi. Numéro 8, Saïd Drahma. Numéro 11, Isaac Al-Sadi. Numéro 12, Sofiane Bendibka. Numéro 14, Hicham Boudaoui. Numéro 16, Alexandre Boukija. Hello, Numéro good evening, wherever you are in the world. Welcome to the second leg of the third round of the two World Cup qualifiers. And to be a leader for the match between Algeria and Cameroon. Mustafa Chaka Stadium, very nearly full, which is capacity of 35,000. Fans who are there, looking and ready to go. Slightly overcast, humid Tuesday evening in Algeria. 26 degrees and 92% humidity. In ideal conditions that will play, barely enter the players' minds on such an important evening. Cameroon have made the 4,000 kilometer journey north towards the Mediterranean coast to Blida. A journey that would have taken the best part of 1,000 hours in a month and a half on foot. They need to find a way to turn around a one goal deficit now that they're there, having suffered a rare defeat on home soil on Friday. Playing in Douala. Cameroon had been unbeaten since losing a Nations Cup qualifier back in 2000. Veteran Islam Slimani's winner handed coach Jamel Belmadi the perfect 46th birthday present. Five minutes before the break, the former Leicester City striker rose to meet Youssef Belayeli's free kick, powered a header past Ajax goalkeeper Andre Onana, securing a hard-fought 1-0 win. As the hosts had the majority of possession and territorial dominance, but failed to find the cutting edge in attack. Impressive record on home soil in recent years. Nigeria certainly in poor position to edge out their opponents and book their place in Qatar. Here at the Mustafa Jaka Stadium, the Algerian national side's home venue, which was opened in 2001. The Desert, Desert Warriors have in fact never lost a competitive game on its turf. With 43 games between their first match against the Democratic Republic of Congo in 2002 and the most recent against Burkina Faso in November, with a quite incredible record of 36 wins and 7 draws, 0 losses, and scored 118 goals in that time, and conceded just 22. So certainly an unenviable task for Cameroon. They have the most World Cup appearances of any African nation for a reason. And they produced an impressive group campaign to get to this stage. Finding themselves in a group also containing the Ivory Coast, the Indomitable Lions faced a tough challenge finished with five victories from their six games, beating the Ivory Coast 1-0 in a winner-takes-all final match. Carl Toko Akambi with the crucial goal. They've made seven World Cup appearances in total, making their debut in 1982, all four consecutive appearances between 1990 and 2002, and their most recent two in 2010 and 2014. The best result came in 1990, topping a group containing the legendary Diego Maradona's Argentina, beating them 1-0 along the way. Cameroon then knocked out Colombia before falling to England after extra time in the quarterfinals, ahead of the three Lions' infamous semi-final with West Germany. That experience could prove crucial for such an important game tonight. Here, yeah. hosts certainly not without World Cup experience of their own. Algeria have made it to football's showpiece tournament on four occasions, shared the occasion with their upcoming opponents on three of those. Also made their debut in 1982 and competed in South Africa in 2010 and Brazil in 2014. They made it past the group stages for the first time, but then knocked out by Germany. Fans ready to go, watching out for themselves on the big screens. Festival atmosphere in this important game. Players will know just what's at stake. So will the fans. One of five places for African teams in Qatar. And the two sides head to head history. Algeria's first leg victory was their first over Cameroon in almost 30 years. Algeria have won twice with two draws, whilst their counterparts Cameroon have won six. The team
team news. Cameroon, AFCON top scorer, Vincent Aboubakar, came off at half-time with a minor injury scare in the first leg. Ford has recovered in time for tonight's clash, but it's not to be risked from the start, dropping to the bench. He'll be sure to take to the field if Cameroon still need a goal late on, though. Leandre Toamba takes his place up front. There are a few other changes. Jean Onana and Nuhu Tolo also drop to the bench, with Kyle Ondua taking the former's spot in midfield and Ambroise Oyongo slotting into the left-back role. The team remain without Andre Frank Zamboangisa. He's initially included in the squad, but pulled out after suffering an injury whilst in action for Napoli. The 26-year-old will be a big miss for Cameroon in their rescue mission. The one change for Algeria, with Youssef Atal replacing Rami Benzabaini, left wing back. They also have Saeed Benrama and Adlen Guadira available to make an impact from the bench. In the first leg, Belmadi switched to a 5 2 3 system for the first time since he took charge in 2018. He stayed away from his usual 4 2 3 1 formation for, his, for this match, instead, setting out his team in a 3 4 2 1 setup, at least according to the team sheet. Uh, the officials and shortly the players making their way into the tunnel Algeria snapped a three game winless streak with their victory on Friday they seek to make up for a disappointing Africa Cup of Nations campaign Slimani grabbing his 40th international goal. He continues to extend his lead at the top of his country's all-time scoring charts. Also extending his lead at the top of the CAF World Cup qualification scoring charts. Sporting Lisbon forward has notched up eight goals so far. Almost certainly he'll finish at the top with a three-goal gap back to a group of five players. And one of those is Manchester City's Real Mares, captain for tonight. Mingo has had an impressive season for club and country, scoring 10 and assisting four in the league so far, along with four goals in the FA Cup, six in the Champions League and five for the national side. A reminder that VAR and goal line technology will be in use for tonight's game. They've been recently installed for these qualifiers. Away goals are in effect. This is come up with a big result to secure a spot at the World Cup. And as the players make their way into the tunnel, nerves likely building somewhat for both teams. Five minutes until kickoff. A few final words from the refereeing team. I hope for a clean match. Not too many controversial decisions to deal with. I appreciate having VAR to support them. is Jamal Belmadi. It's being brought out onto the pitch. Here they come the players. manager Rigobert Song stated his unhappiness with Algeria's defensive approach to the first leg. He will likely come up against the same sturdy resistance today. Former Liverpool, West Ham and Galatasaray centre-back was a key player for the national side for over a decade. After 
Hamilton period as caretaker manager and the under-23s coach. He's given full control of the senior side a month ago, placing Tony Huxley-Sal. Opposite member Bel Maddy, not so new to the role, spent almost four years in the Algeria dugout. Delcada Bedran, Esperance to Tunis, centre back, making up part of a three man defensive back line. Players now lining up, ready for the national anthems. Eric Maxim Chupamotting there, forward for Cameroon. It is Martin Angler, captain tonight. The national anthem. Cameroon national anthem and now for the hosts Algeria. Passion evident for both players and fans. The players grew up dreaming of playing in the World Cup. Both these teams agonizingly close to achieving that dream. There are the managers, Bill Maddy and Song, exchanging niceties. I hope for a good tempered game. Here are the teams, Algeria, in a 3-4-2-1 setup. Rice and Bolly, the goalkeeper. Bedrain, Mandy and Ben Lamry at the back. Baniada, Zaraki, Benassa and Atal in midfield four. Riyad Mahrez, captain. Youssef Belayili, the wing forwards. And Islam Slimani up front. face but at least on paper is a 4-4-2 setup we'll see once the map gets going exactly how they line up the 
Clearly, Super Motting handed the armband late on. Winning the coin toss. The back four for Cameroon. Collins Bay, Michael Ngadu, Jean-Charles Castelletto of Nantes, and Ambroise Oyongo of Montpellier. Large Ligue 1 representation in the squad. Midfield four, Martin Angler, Samuel Guet, Gael Andua, and Carl Toko Kambi. Parisian born Leon Ford has been having a great season for his club side. Up front, we have Chupa Motting and Leandre Toamba. The new faces for the second leg. So, for all the talk, for the preparation, the time is now. So, the referee blows the whistle, and away we go, and bleed up. Crucial second leg, which will decide whether it's Algeria or Cameroon. will be putting their name into the hat for Friday's World Cup draw. Algeria, all white, an early attack. Winning an early corner. Cameroon shooting from right to left. In the green shirts, red shorts, and yellow socks. Reminder that it is Algeria with a one goal advantage as well as home advantage. Slimani with the only goal of the first leg. It's early corner taken short. Scoring up fight. Looking to find a gap. Delivers it into the danger area. And the goalkeeper missing it. But sliced. Sliced wide. Slimani with an early chance to make it two goals in two legs. Nervy first moment for Onana. Turning this way and that, eventually getting the ball into the danger area. Onana only really getting a couple of knuckles to the ball. Falling to Slimani, but unable to get the shot anywhere near the target. Nigeria immediately win the ball back. Look to attack again. An early goal could make a huge difference to the momentum. 2 0 up on aggregate would be a huge dent in the confidence of the Cameroon side. If it were to happen, particularly in the early minutes. Reminder that away goals are in effect inside the 90 minutes. So Cameroon has to get two. They're in a great position. As one wouldn't be enough for Nigeria. Composure from Gadu. So Oyungo on the left, trying to play it forward, but cut out. So more sedate few moments after that early incident with the corner and the shot. Cameroon will be looking to get things going pretty quickly. And here on the left, Altoke can be. Laying it back to Iongo. Only one man in the box in towards him. Easily headed away. Nigeria. Looking for a chance to break. Attempted ball out to the left, cut out. But a sloppy pass there from Ngadu to Mares. Could be a chance here for Algeria. Cutting inside, Belayli. Finds Mares. A snapshot. Not particularly worrying, Anana. City winger 
Having an excellent season for his club. And is the joint second top scorer in the qualifiers so far. Behind Vincent Abubakar. Apologies behind Ilan Fumani. So Abubakar was the AFCON top scorer. It's not rest for this game after coming off during the first leg with a muscle problem. He'll be sure to make an appearance if required later on. Algeria building from the back. And a bit of space on the left for Atal. Good control by Benyada. Put into the danger area. Just ahead of Slimani. Out for a goal kick. It has been Algeria with the best of the chances in these early minutes. Slimani with a decent chance early on, which he couldn't quite get under control. And a few centimetres away there. And a shot that would have been just a few yards out. Good work by Benny Adda. Slimani just unable to extend the leg far enough and turn home. Close team play there to keep possession by Cameroon. Going all the way back to Anana. Nigerian fans doing everything they can to be the 12th man. Played long, only as far as Benyada. his touch coming into the face of Gal Andua Algerians with the throw driven forward by Benyada towards Slimani keeps hold of it plays it back nobody in the box currently for Mares given away Nice idea by Benyada, quite the execution. The Cameroon throw. That's the letter. Looking for movement up front. Chipped ball. Towards Shukamoting. Cameroon content to keep possession for now. Nearly gave it away with a loose touch there, fight. Recovered and then was caught by Atal. Ayungo again. Seen plenty of the ball early on. Do it. Keeping position. And then we build again. Chance to break here for Algeria. Released. Well cut out. Important challenge by Ngadu. Make amends for that earlier error. Benasset. Bring it back to Belaili. Just about kept on. Slight miscommunication. Slimani first to the ball and winning the free kick in a dangerous area. Clear to the referee. That challenge hurt from Castelletto. Then on centre-back. 
Just a little too late as he tried to intercept. And this has Riyad Mahrez written all over it. So it seems to be some kind of discussion as to who is going to take it currently. Players currently standing over the ball. Mares needs to take authority as the captain. And surely the biggest name in the Algerian ranks. Four man wall. Belaili so fencing his chances. He delivered in. Flicked back, attempted training ground move, but the Cameroon ball wise to it, They're giving it away again though. Atal charging into the box, going to ground, not really making any kind of appeal for a penalty there. So Nigerian fans making their voices heard. Rami's Zarauki. Builder for FC20, born in Amsterdam, represents Nigerian side. So the first 10 minutes, sides be reasonably pleased. Nigeria had the better moments, the bigger chances early on. Cameroon with a fair amount of the possession. Start breaking further into the Algerian half, though, into the danger areas, into the final third. But no huge rush, knowing that one goal would be enough to take just to extra time. It's in their interests for a high scoring game, though. A 1 0 win would take us to extra time, but a 2 1 win would see them through to Qatar. Is the potential for a high scoring game to get away from you. Belmadi have given clear instructions to his side, as will Rigobert Song. Very new to the Cameroon dugout, the former Liverpool centre back. So spent time at West Ham and Galatasaray, amongst other clubs. He was given full control of the senior side a month ago. It appears as caretaker manager and the time in charge of the under-23s. I would love to get to his first ever World Cup, but it's Algeria here. And Mares not able to keep the shot down. Another chance for the hosts. Good chance for Mares. Plenty of space up against just Ngadu. With options running into the box. I was able to get the whip he wanted on the shot from Cameroon. The pass is over hit. To one but unable to get there. with the pass. Switched from right back to left back. Natal looking for options, finding Mandy. Algeria try to play it out from the back and win a throw. Captain Chupamotting, formerly of Stoke and Paris Saint Germain, now at Bayern, 33 year old, born in Hamburg, then choosing to represent Cameroon. Oh, 
Morris wins it back on the halfway line. He's got Slomani on his right. He wins a free kick. Trying to find, I think it was Belaili on his left. Appeared to have given the ball away, not the touch he wanted, but brought down nonetheless. And the referee deciding. A free kick. It's his decision. Ngadu again. Be a long night for the Ghent centre back. Coming up against one of the leading wing forwards in world football in Mares. Similar position to the last free kick. Unlikely to try the same training ground operation that they. Attempted last time, which was cut out by the wall. Maybe a little far away from it for an effort on goal. Mars with the option of the left footed cross. Around about 25 yards out. Not too far for a strike. And it is straight into the wall, though. Retain possession. And Yada playing it forwards. Vanessa trying to find a teammate in the box, winning a corner. Nigeria keep up. The momentum that they've built so far in this early quarter of an hour. Mares over to take the corner. The six yard box cleared. Only as far. Sent back for the long range effort. And Anna parrying it out. It's an Algeria player in the box. Delaili. Oh no, sorry. Atal. Just offside. Unable to react quickly enough. An awkward angle. A shot out of nothing there from the Algerian centre back. Catching Anana slightly unawares. Cameroon need to try and get a bit of stranglehold on this game. Uh, at least they have a throw now. Guet telling his men to go forwards and playing the long ball. Towards Toko Kambi, who's moved over to the right side of the pitch now. Started on the left. Right, the right back with the throw. And towards Chop Martin. He turns well. Stands up his man, tries to put it in, wins a corner. Perhaps not. Up here. It's a goal kick. First viewing looked to have taken the deflection. Good strength by the forward. Uh, but slipping as he attempted to take the shot. Come cross. Actually kicking it away from himself. It is a slippery, skiddy surface here in Algeria. Humidity high, 26 degrees the temperature despite the late kickoff time. Plenty of moisture on the turf. It's gone against Chupo Motting there, but generally something the strikers are more pleased to see than the defenders. A slip can prove far more costly for someone in the back line, prevent an opportunity to a forward player. There's Guet going long again. Very nearly finding Tawamba. Well held by Raisa Mboli. Tries to release his own attacker. The route one clearance. 
Cameroon have won it back. Not for long. And here is Mares again. A couple of options. Slimani bursting towards the box, but he just checked his run at the wrong time. It's cut out. And Anana able to clear. Slightly higher tempo to the last minute or so. After a brief bit of respite. Do it. The whistle's growing as Cameroon keep possession for longer than the Algerian fans would like. It's back into the box towards Tawamba. Cleared by Mandy, and this time it will be Cameroon corner, the first of the night. A shot and goal will do them the world of good. It's almost halfway through this first period. Out shot at all, let alone on target for the visitors. And Bolly telling his defenders to be wary, keep an eye out. Ball delivered in. Cleared again by Mandy. This time it'll go out for a throw. And Bolly, another player born in Paris. Plays for El, El, El Tefilak. There's Chupa Motting. Trying to find a shot. Again, about the closest that they've come. Slightly awkward clash there with Beniada. The right wing back. No harm done. And another corner. It's better from Cameroon. A little pressure. Soko Akambi. And two players there. Ready to take it. Ongla waiting in the middle. It is Toko Akambi to deliver it in. Dropped and into the net, but. And it seems to be counting. The referee, I thought, was pointing for a free kick. The Cameroon players certainly think it's a goal. And Bolly got a hand to it, was knocked by an attacker. He's still down the goalkeeper. So here the replay, good corner, but it looked like it was going to Mbolly. Certainly knocked over, can't see who by. Uh, so his own player was pushed into the goalkeeper by, I think, Tawamba. Chupan Watting reacting the quickest with a good strike. Finding the net. It was maybe just a bit of mishandling by the goalkeeper. Good reactions from the buy-in forward. And Bolly now being seen to by the medical team. If VAR there we go, VAR, goal confirmed. No issues in the video assistant room as to the decision of the referee on the pitch. The goal stands, it's 1-0 Cameroon. One all on aggregate. We're back to square one. Some of the Algerian players still remonstrating with the referee. Being hard done by. Maddie also asking about VAR. Disappointed, clearly, to be told that it's already been reviewed. There won't be any change. So, 1 1 the score on aggregate, 1 0 on the night, halfway through the first period. Nigeria now with a fire in their bellies. 
perhaps feeling hard done by. But it's only the scoreline that matters right now. He's looking to attack straight away. Slimani with the turn. Cut out. Beat. Cameron goal kick. The outlook after the night has changed considerably with that goal. Algeria could well have stayed fairly defensive. Certainly if it had remained nil-nil into the second half. But now no, another Cameroon goal would spell real trouble. As one of their own wouldn't be enough. It had been Algeria with the better of the early chances. Till 20 minutes, Cameroon hadn't mustered a shot or a corner. That brief spell, a few minutes with Algeria pinned back. And a lucky break. Chupamotting taking his chance though. Certainly lived up proceedings. In Blida. Nigeria now with the ball at the back to a free kick. That left wing again, they've had a fair amount of success going down that route. Certainly balls into the box, a few shots on goal from that. Both wings in back to Peñada. He's putting some decent crosses himself. Algeria unable to take the chances. That fell to them. Chiba Motting taking the one that fell to him. Zaraki going back to Bedran. Esperance centre back going long. Acrobatic clearance there by Jean Charles Castelletto. Brought down well by Chiba Motting. Here's Tawamba delivered in. Nobody there. Seemingly. Fully recovered and Bolly able to gather. Zarelki wins a free kick. Gouet, the guilty party. The captain perhaps a little nervous now. I'd love to go to a World Cup. Algeria last making it to football's showpiece tournament in 2014. The eight years since, Mahrez has really pushed on to another level. Now the captain of his side. And his Slimani putting it into the middle, but just wide. Belaili with the chance out of nowhere. The net rippling, but the ball having gone the wrong side of it. It fooled a few of the home fans. Good composure by Slimani. The mistake was by Ngadu, played across. But just the wrong side of the post from the breast winger. Just caught under his feet a little bit. Maybe slightly too strong the pass. The uh, culpability lies with the recipient of the pass rather than the provider. Belaili will hope to regret that. And Anna clearly regretting his goal kick. But finding a man, no problems. Chupa Motting out on the right. A 
bit of space here for Beniada. Finding Mares. Cameroon with plenty of men back, though. Did say it could be a long night for Ngedu. Slight clumsy attempt, another acrobatic clearance from the Cameroon defensive line. This one nearly costing them dear. Zarel keep to Benietta. Played long by Mandy. Finding Mares. Kind of control you'd expect. But the second touch, not quite so good. Helped on his way down, perhaps, by Oyongo. But throw in for Cameroon nonetheless. She passed the half hour mark. Just the one goal. But a fairly eventful first half so far. A lovely flick. Releasing Ongla. Still with the ball, cuts inside. And nearly catching, I think, and Bolly out there. Did look more like a cross than a shot. And the goalkeeper was on his way forward, but able to hold on as the ball may well have just found the side netting. Algeria once again attempting to play it out from the back. Familiar feeling for Manchester City's Mares. It's the way they do it in the sky blue half of Manchester under Pep Guardiola. Galayili holding on to the ball despite a heavy touch, playing it out to Benyada. Has to deliver one in. Cleared this time more successfully by Ngadu. Slowing again as Algeria passed it around the back. And the other with the ball finding Zarauki. Just blocked there. Well by Ondua. Sliding in. And giving away a throw. Straight back out for another. Going into the box to Slimani. Holds off his man. Looks for options. Does well there because Benietta can kind of run straight towards him. Out to the left towards Atal. Nice footwork. Into the corner. Fight equal to the trickery. Bella Ely to take it. Moving short and towards the danger and missed again by Onana. Making it clear he didn't miss. He didn't touch the ball. Yelling at someone. I'm not sure who is to blame there. And the referee and the linesman clearly deciding that somebody did touch it from the Cameroon team. Another Algeria corner. This time delivered in by Mares. Running in there. Bedran getting to it and all the way out for a throw. Back the way of Algeria once again. Much to the disbelief. I think that was a young goat. It was. Hard to see on first viewing who got the touch. The referee in a far better position than I am. Deciding the touch came from a young goat. More pressure here from Algeria. That's going to go over the head of Belaili. To be 
head towards the final 10 minutes of the first half. Nigeria would love to get something on the board, change the momentum of the game. Anana has looked shaky at times. Having had a pretty good Africa Cup of Nations. On home soil for the Cameroon team. Chupa Motting winning a free kick. Chupa can be once again on set piece duties, although joined by Goet. Delivered in towards the back post. It's flicked on by Castelletto, but after having fouled the Algerian defender, according to the referee. Once again, Zaraki had to run around in circles as he finds a gap. His side play out from the back. Goes around going long though. Slimani getting the touch, back on his feet. Maris with the ball. Space for Belaeli. Dummies. Drop of the shoulder. He's gone down. The referee is pointing to the corner, not the penalty spot. Again, the Algerian fans hoping it was the latter. Belaeli still down, turning away the hand. Of fight and offered to him. Appears to be a legitimate challenge, though. Maybe catching the boot as well as the ball. It certainly looked far from a penalty. Bill Ailey now slowly getting back to his feet. Very slowly getting back to his feet. Seen complaining about the outside of that right foot. There we go. Oh, fine to take a short corner. Or receive a short corner, rather. Referee not happy with it, though. Pelayli showing his displeasure once again. Now being called over by the referee. The option of the short corner now gone. It'll be delivered into the box. It's gone over everyone to Benyeda at the back stick. Acrobatically puts it back into the six yard box. Appeals of handball from the Algerians. Not sure who against. It's brilliantly done by Benyeda. Now slowing things down. We'll wait for a replay to see exactly what happened there. Benyada finding Mares again. Nice header from a long range pass. Zarauki over to Benassa. Benayli again charging into the box and winning a corner. This time staying on his feet. There is the replay. Collins fight, and now another shout. But again, the referee pointing just for a goal kick, not the penalty. We only just cut back to the action in time to see that. Corner clearly taken quickly. There is a VAR check for a possible penalty. Players from both sides. 
Surrounding the referee. It's once again, Belaili on the floor. Hanana coming over to speak to him. Flicked on. And it's Fai again. Did he get the ball? Did he get the man? VAR will decide. The check is ongoing. Play on. It's the decision. No penalty. Confirmed. Belaili once again walking a fine line here with the referee. He's told him clearly no more of that. He'll talk himself into the book. That appeal looks to have a little more merit than his previous one. But still no luck for the Algerians in terms of winning the spot kick. Cameroon seemingly happy to kind of take the tempo down a little bit now. They'd love to go in with the 1-0 lead. Sure, often to them before the match, they would have taken that. Nigeria win it back though, will look to break again. Slimani looking to slip it through to Mares, but cut out. Now Cameroon breaking forwards. Good work from Mondua. He's still got the ball. And winning a throw in. Again, Zarauki, one of many Algerians, not overly happy with the recent decisions. That one looked, at least from this angle, fairly obvious. It's the left back, Oyongo, making his way as far forward as he will be allowed. It's meant to be a long throw, but into the box towards Tawamba. Chupa Motting again keeping the ball alive. Tawamba toe poking it towards goal. Still not cleared. And Mara's finally clearing the lines. A good turn from Belaili. He needs support though. Five back. Goal side of him. And with a challenge. No real complaints this time from Belaili. Like to be a good recovery and a good tackle by the right back. Really frantic end to this first half. One ball cut out by Ben Lamry. Qatar Sport Club centre back. fight involved in everything in the last 10 minutes or so good or bad it did appear perhaps to strike his hand but his hand was in to his body in natural position not a lot he could do about it it's again super motting turning surrounded by players this time losing out algeria can't clear the lines totally they'll get another chance Do get the ball eventually. Mara's with it on the right. Weighing up his options. None of them really doing the job. And instead, finding a Cameroon player. Chupa Motting again. He loses that himself. Belaili back with the ball. Also involved in everything recently. As well to hold on to it. With two players either side of him. Played out to the right. Pinata just about to clip it in. Missed again by Onana. Look to get out, but only get as far as Benassa. Benayi with support with Atal, choosing to return it to the centre midfielder. Does eventually make its way out to Atal. The space comes in towards the box, beats his man, but the ball pokes through to Castelletto. Comfortable clearance. 
So into the final minute of scheduled time. Well, either side managed to find a game-changing late goal in this first period. As things stand, we're all square on aggregate. Cameroon ahead on the night. Both these sides had quite impressive home records in the last two decades, really. Cameroon lost on home style in the first leg, and now Algeria behind in the second. Benyatta trying to put it in again. Nobody there. Does work all the way through to Belaili on the left. Squares up Faye once again, delivers it in. Hanana once again not getting to the ball. Flicked up in the air. Maybe two minutes of additional time. And he had to try to take it quickly. The referee seeing Onana on the floor. Slimani not pleased. Whether or not he saw the goalkeeper, he must know. Might be able to play on. The goalkeeper currently down on the turf. Onana maybe just needing a bit of a breather. Here is that acrobatic, acrobatic rather. Cross into the box, it struck. It's Guet actually. And Benietta has been involved in pretty much everything in this last 20 minutes for much of the half. It's well to Satel, 29 year old. Often plays at centre back, used at right back tonight. There's confirmation there that it was Guet and not Fai who it struck. Either way, no penalty decision from the VAR control room. So just 30 seconds now remaining. Algeria will look to make one final throw of the dice in this first period. Once again, it's Benyatta on the right. Yeah. Continuing to try and build slowly from the back, but they will run out of time. They don't make a move forwards. And here is one towards Mares. Gadu in the middle, cleared out by Ayungo originally. Here is Angadu. Hoofing it clear for a throw. Might be enough to see them through to half time. Referee not with his whistle in his mouth as yet, though. Nigeria with the ball on the edge of the box. Not anymore. Cameroon will look to break. What would be a killer blow if they can get a second goal late on? Chupamotting winning yet another free kick. Still waiting for the first booking of the night. It's not going to come now, despite what looked a little cynical. By Atal, the left wing back. But, uh, he take the free kick. Well beyond the scheduled two additional minutes. About to hit the three minute mark. Seems most likely Cameroon will lump this into the box. One final chance. And they do so. Cleared away only as far as Toko can be. Can't quite get there. Andua did. The referee blowing. So 1 0 Cameroon at half time. 1 1 on aggregate. Eric Maxim Chupa Motting of Bayern with that goal. A little controversial how it came about. 22 minutes in. Goalkeeper Rice and Bolly initially at least half catching the ball and then knocked as he dropped it by his own defender who had admittedly been pushed by a Cameroon player. Either way, the ball dropping to Trooper Motting turned quickly on the spot, swivelling, improvising well, finding a gap amongst the players inside the six-yard box. Plenty for the referee to do 
in this first 45. Plenty of decisions, plenty of penalty appeals, particularly from the Algerians. But 1-0, just the one goal, all important for the visitors. They've only had 41% of the possession. And fewer shots, though one more on target. Slightly wasteful by Algeria. Just the one shot from seven on target. More corners as well. Fouls fairly even, but no bookings as yet. So, how much will change in the second half?
Welcome back to Bleeder for the second half of this crucial second leg of the third round of the CAF 2022 World Cup qualifiers. Nigeria came into the game with a one goal advantage after their 1 0 win in the first leg on Friday. That was cancelled out by Eric Maxim Chupo Motting after 22 minutes. The referee getting us back underway. That goal. Somewhat controversial. Algerian players claiming a foul on goalkeeper Raisin Bolly from a corner. Nothing given. Chupa Motting swiveled on the spot and found the back of the net to make it one all on aggregate. One nil on the night. So we're back to square one with 45 minutes remaining. Both sides desperate to secure their spot at the 22-22 World Cup. Played long there by Ben Lamry. Cameroon will look to pick up where they left off in terms of the scoreline, but Egypt certainly creating more chances in the first period. Nice play there. Cut out. An aimless pass down the wing for Youssef Atal. His first contribution of the second 45. Nigeria may have created more chances. But Cameroon with more shots on target in the first half, albeit just the two. So Algeria's one. Algeria hunted up seven shots. But lacking the cutting edge that the Cameroonians lacked on home soil in the first leg. of that first leg. Cameroon have been unbeaten since losing a Nations Cup qualifier back in 2000. Heading into this second leg. The Nigerian national side never been beaten at the Mustafa Chaka Stadium, which opened in 2001. Winning 36, drawing seven of their 43 games on this turf. But currently on track to lose Surprisingly on home soil, just as their opponents did in the first leg. We're breaking and a chance, fired well wide by Martin Ongla. Slicing. Badly with his left foot. There's Mbolli. Stayed down for a while after that opening goal. It appears to be full fitness once again. Perhaps more just making it known that he had been He's made contact with during that goal being scored as we are went on to gradually confirm it over the course of the next minute or two. There's Belaili is involved in a lot of the action, particularly in the first half. He's found Mares, great touch to bring it down, and it falls to the edge of the area. And Slimani will surely turn it in, and he has done. But the flag is up and it won't count. VAR will, of course, check it. He didn't celebrate particularly hard. You can see Mara is certainly onside. And the ball from Belaili. Well picked out. Good control from the Manchester City winger. You don't see any more than that. VAR is checking the goal. If the offside was for Mares, it might 
Be about to see a change of scoreline. Does appear onside. We work on shoulders. We don't get the lines we do in certain leagues. Clearly. Here we go. Slimani, though, does look far closer to being offside. And the goal confirmed not to count. Morris certainly onside. Slimani just with his left leg beyond the line as the ball found its way through to him. Took a couple of touches before finding the net. In the end didn't matter. Nigeria have to go again looking for their first of the night. It's going to be too powerful for Atel to keep in. Zarauki there, the overhit pass. Elsewhere tonight, Ghana have booked their place in Qatar. Progressing on away goals at the expense of Nigeria after a 1-1 draw. There are the lines confirming. Slimani just slightly too far forward. For what would have been a very important early goal in the dynamic of this game. And alongside Ghana, Thomas Partey with their goal there. Will beat Senegal. Nigeria looking to join them as well here on the edge of the box. Broken away. Great feet from Chupo Motting. Brought down. And the first yellow card of the night. Finally, 51 minutes in. It's a cynical one from Zarauki. A few tugs at the shirt and then a clip of the heels. Now have to watch himself, the central midfielder, for the remaining 40 minutes, or perhaps more, if things were to stay as they currently are. It's a chance for Belaili to stretch his legs again. He's got support since Limani. Drop of the shoulder. But I think he ran that out. He did. It'll be a goal kick. It's the wrong choice. Too many touches. It was with that kind of play, though, that he nearly won a couple of penalties in the first half. Certainly be on the line. Frustration in the background for Slimani. Chupa Motting, the captain, back down again. Maybe that clip of the heels. An awkward one for him. Medical team will check him out. There's Jamal Belmadi. Nigerian coach, former midfielder, born in Champigny, Suyoman. It's not so new to his role as Rigobert Song, his opposite number. He spent almost four years in the Algeria dugout. Spells with the Qatar national side and Al Duhail. They might be became manager in August 2018. Despite them not being fancied at the tournament, guided Algeria to the 2019 Africa Cup of Nations title, his first international trophy. And now look to take a step closer to the greatest prize of all in football. And get his side to book their place at the World Cup. at Algeria playing it forward again Slimani chasing on he did so many times in the first half tireless running is often the single man up top it's Castelletto who's cleared that out and it will be an Algeria corner and many in the first half as well and Nana looking a little uncomfortable at times being flapped at a few punches it's Belaili to take it but not past the first man falls to Atal Nigeria can rebuild 
played out back towards Belaili. Kept in, seemingly, by Bimenasa. Here is Belaili, squaring up his man. Finds Mares unmarked. Step over and across. Perhaps a shot, in fact. And Nana having to turn it over. His weaker right foot. Oops, perhaps like someone has a laser there, which is not what we want to see. Pointing at Onana. Dealt him by now. Oh, a chance. Good delivery by Mares. And Bedran, the man, charging in the centre back. Free header. Lost his mark. Unable to keep the header down. Big chance. And then the six yard box. Just had to keep it down. Jerry had the ball in the net once already in this first 10 minutes. Could well have been a second time. That one would have counted. Huge noise from the crowd. 35,000 capacity. Space on the right for Beniada. Combining well with Mares numerous times in the first half. And once again, nicely picked out by Mares. He gets it back. It's Belaili. A bit of space. Mares again. Headed towards the middle, cut out before it could get to Slimani. Uh, Benassa. And Cameroon can finally clear their line somewhat. Free kick one, a foul on Ongla. Slimani charging through the back of him, claiming his innocence. It will be a Cameroon free kick. So picking up Egypt. Yeah, Senegalese nightmares have come back to haunt them. It's the team who beat them to the Africa Cup of Nations Trophy, beat them on penalties once again. Sadio Mane scoring the winning spot kick. And his Liverpool teammate Mo Salah missed. Senegal put their place in the finals. So of the five spaces for African teams, Ghana and Senegal guaranteed there now. Will it be Algeria or Cameroon? Join them. Chupa Motting trying to find a gap between the legs of the Algerian defender. Yeah, no luck. And then a free kick won by Vanessa. Algeria likes to play it out from the back. So once again, generally done a good job of it in this first hour. Very rarely getting caught out. Really well-drilled team. Been doing this for a few years. It's a space for Slimani who takes an effort. And Anna can only parry it. And we'll get back to collect. Tester, decent effort from the former Leicester City forward. Low, drilled, long the date, Jesus. And I'm not doing enough. Gadu venturing forward, centre back. Algeria, win the ball back again. Cleared long towards Slimani. Gadu back to his station and able to clear. This side will have a throw. It's 
Kawamba. Al Taroun, originally a centre back and a right midfielder, been converted to a forward in recent years, the 32 year old. That is where he's playing alongside Chupo Motting tonight. Winning ahead of that. Not able to find his strike partner. Out by Collins Fay. Palmari there. Still plenty of instructions. He's a midfielder in his time. Played for teams including Marseille and Southampton. And whilst on loan at Manchester City, it's the victim of a theft by two bank workers. In total, the bank worker stole more than £350,000 from the accounts of Belmuddy and two of his teammates. Back to the here and now. Belaili unhappy. Have the Cameron player down on the turf. It's Chupa Motting. Still perhaps suffering. It didn't look a lot in that contact where the, uh, the yellow card was given out to Zarauki. Maybe it just was an awkward fall. He's not looked quite comfortable since. Not, certainly not winning as many headers as he was in the first half. Now carried off by the medical team. To be checked over. Perhaps replaced Ishak Belfodil there on the sidelines. Rigobert Song. The decision to make. The goal scorer potentially unable to continue. And a change made. There is Belfodil coming on for Chupa Motting. Trying to see the sporting forward unable to continue. But a chance now for the Herta forward. Perhaps to get his name on the score sheet. If he does so, Cameroon will be in a very good position in this game. A reminder that the away goals rule will apply within the 90 minutes. So a second goal for Cameroon. We'll leave Algeria having to score two to avoid defeat. 2-1 on the night wouldn't be good enough. The only way we will see extra time, potentially penalties, is if things remain as they are. currently in the Cameroon half. Will the visitors start to sit back? Of course, not currently doing enough to progress. And a second goal now will arguably count for more than one in extra time. But certainly Algeria are on the front foot. Go forward towards Belaili once again. Mandy with the lofted ball. But a little knock in the back from Collins Fight. Enough to disturb the breast winger. He looked frustrated, but didn't appeal for a penalty. Certainly hit the deck at least twice, if not three times, in the penalty area in the first half. Appealing with vigour couple of those times. 
Remonstrating with the referee, but ultimately not getting a decision. This side do get a decision now, though. Ben Lamry, a judge to be felled. Taken quickly, cut out. Jira will come again, though. see a graphic but it would appear that Nuhu Tolo has made his way onto the field. Still with plenty more possession. And Lamry all the way back to Mboli. slowing down now as we reach the halfway point of this second period. Nigeria came out fighting. But as mentioned, as the time ticks on, the danger posed to them by a second goal arguably increases depending on your outlook. Two goals would be very difficult to find in the final, say, 10 or 15 minutes. They could find one of their own here, though. A brilliant save. And another incredible work by Mboli. What would have been a killer second goal. And with his feet for the first one, and up quickly. To dive to his left, keep out the rebound. Okay, can be taking on Atal, his fellow league out player, winning a throw. It's a great ball in to Amber with the chance. Checking here for a possible penalty. Here's the appeals are uh, against Isa Mandi. So we'll have to wait whilst VAR make their decision. Huge for the outcome of this game. looks worried no penalty the decision clearly the save coming from the goalkeeper as first suspected deserving of his kudos Oh, remains all square on aggregate. Nigeria having had most of the possession in both halves, but they know, as it was with Eric Maxim Chupramotting's goal, one strike against the run of play and they would be in a world of trouble. Oh, 
that. And that's the right to fight. A bit of space for a cross. Deflected. Strike there from Guet. Powerful, but blocked almost immediately. Benasset claiming not to have touched it, and seemingly the line's been agreeing. Brian must have got the last touch, and it's an Algeria goal kick. So into the final 20 minutes, the scheduled 90. Still just the one substitute so far. Niki Tolu coming on for the injured Eric Maxim Chupa Motting. Algeria yet to make a change. Here's Slimani once again chasing the long ball. Held off well by Ngadu. Andre Onana. Firing up his troops. His brother Jean on the bench. Played in the first leg. But dropped tonight. Still plenty of time for new players to feature. Particularly if we go to extra time. Perhaps that is what the managers are bearing in mind. Game could get cagier as we enter the final stages. Nobody wants to be the man to slip up. Belaili, the foul on fight. Together a few times tonight, those two. A chance for Cameroon to put it into the box. Toko Akambi once again. being reminded of the 10-yard rule, which he appears to have forgotten. He's still not there. There we go. So, a Youngo left back, left footer, also standing over it. Don't want to see that laser, but put in by Toko Akambi. Missed by everyone. It will fall to Guet at the back stick. Tries to turn his way out of a corner. Doesn't succeed. Equally, Algeria don't succeed in clearing it. Comes back to Toko Akambi on the right. Can't beat the first man with his cross. Fired long for Belaeli to chase. Easy enough for Castelletto to deal with. But given away there by Fai, Slimani Breaking in, finds Belaili in the box. Delivered in. Vanessa, the way out. The strike. Lacking power, easy for Inanna to collect. It was Mares on the edge of the box. Would hope for better. For a sixth goal in the qualification campaign. Moving himself into the outright second spot on the top scorers list. A bit more possession for Cameroon. Not had a lot of it in the second half. Just cut out by Mandy. Tucker can be loitering. We appear to have moved further forward since Chupamotin came off. Perhaps Nuhu playing out on the left. 
Toko can be now one of the two forwards alongside Toamba. It's Algeria on the attack now. A little scrappy in the middle. Possess some changing hands. Toko can be playing it forwards. Ongla there is on the attack. Defensive midfielder. Captain for the first leg. We are to have a second substitute of the night. It's Zarauki clearly not rest with that yellow card any longer. And Ben Debka, the man to come on. Nigeria looking to get away with the ball. Belaili being manhandled. He does win a free kick. And there is the second yellow card of the night. So after the owner of the first one had left the pitch. It's Gwet who picks it up. Clearly tugging the shirt off Bella Ailey as he tried to break away. Debka make a difference. See, more defensive minded midfielder as the man he replaced was. Plays for Al Fatih in the Saudi Professional League. It could be anyone who pops up with that all important goal. As we're now into the final quarter of an hour of normal time. Tokyo can be with a slightly clumsy touch, not where he wanted it to go. Cleared by Mboli. Still just kept in. Tamara doing well. Tawamba puts it in. Off the back of the head of a young goat. Free kick the way of Algeria. Perhaps off the hand rather than the back of the head. Yeah. Benny Yedda not that pleased with being shoved about. And less involved so far this half, the right wing back. Everything seems to be going through himself and Mares in the first 45. It's been Belaili and Atal on the left. Most of the Algerian attacks have come through. There is Atal on the free kick. slowly from the back, content passing it around. Play switched, well dealt with by Atal. Looks to make a break forward. Clumsy pass by Belaili, gives the possession away. Now Cameroon, straight forward. No luck with the pass forward for Ayongo. Have to retreat back the way to his post. Now 
as predicted. Things slowing down. Things getting a little cagier. Both sides may now settle for extra time. Maroon. Right, things could be totally wrapped up with a second goal, surely. So we're now 10 minutes of play left. They'd only have to prevent the opposition scoring two if they were to score now, and they would be through. Advantage played earlier, and now Nigerian throw. It's Ongla who's down. The team going to check him out. The rest of the players, or many of the players, take on some fluids. It's a very humid night still. Despite it being well past 10 o'clock local time. Temperature not really dropping, still well into the 20s. Humidity 90%. So it felt like a long evening, certainly for the full backs and the wing backs. But the prize worth the hard work for whoever picks their spot at this Winters World Cup. Slamani once again up top, looking to spin off his man. Not happening this time. There is Ongla, seemingly fine to carry on. Long range shot, very speculative effort from Ondua. Hasn't been Massively involved tonight, looking to get himself more involved, potentially seeing his name in lights, but not happening this time. No worries for Mboli. It's back with Algeria again, now at walking pace. Cameroon certainly not pressing. Driven forward there, Andy nearly played out for a throw, kept in by Benny Adder. Play forward to Slimani. Checks back. Looks for support. Finds Mares on the edge of the area. And Onana with the diving save. Down to his left. Out for a corner. Decent effort from Mares. So needs to have been some kind of indiscretion. Can't see. The offside, perhaps. Is that Belaili, maybe? Whoever it was, the Algerian forward deemed to have been interfering with play as Mares took the shot. Slightly harsh, perhaps, but we have it back again. Already on the edge of the area with Mares. Slamani winning it back. So booking it towards Belaili. Cut out. Pedran. Winning the header, fouling his opposition in the process. Climbing, well, not really climbing as much as jumping and then landing on top of his opponent. It's a Wamba. Seems to be fine to carry on as well. Cameroon now with possession. Slightly errant pass. Nigeria will look to break. Belili again. Looking for Mares. Predictably good first touch. Runs around his man, Ayongo. Leads it off to Benassa. Up to the left with Atal. A step over. An effective one. He put in the cross. No. Overhit. Not quite where he wanted it. He's out for a Cameroon goal kick. Oh. 
Referee feeling the heat as well. I think it's money worth. Money is worth out of those sweatbands. To the final five. Will we get a winner? And Lamry bringing it out from the back himself. Flicked on by Mares. Slimani will chase it down. Gadu's there. It's Slimani appealing. Oh, he was shoved. Referee doesn't agree. Now knocked forward for Tawamba to chase. Appears to either have fouled or given away a throw in. Or whatever it is, we will get a change for Cameroon. Back, the man's come off. Pierre Kundi. To replace him. midfielder so perhaps a change of shape for Cameroon Maybe three at the back perhaps just slot into the left back position there's a trade for Olympiakos in the Greek Super League 26 year old it's featured four times during the World Cup qualifiers now on for the most important minutes of them all in this campaign. Nigeria, two minutes to find an equaliser on the night and a winner on aggregate. They have generally been on top for much of the game, but certainly the second 45. Then you got a, running a free kick. Clumsy one by Ondua. Inside here, Atal trying his luck from outside the area. Blocked. Only as far as Bendebka. Mara is now nice footwork. Gets it back. Shapes for a shot. Straight down the middle, though. And Anna lost. Bing. Hugely tested so far this half. More assured. A slightly nervy opening 45. About a clearance by Ben Lamry. Not going very far. Pierre Kunde up to challenge. His first action on the pitch. It's Algeria who come over with it again. Slamani trying to knock it through. Unsuccessful. Final 30 seconds of normal time. Pace of the game far less hectic than it was in the final minutes of the first 45. Looking from distance, parried by Nana, high in the air. Effective. Here is Kunde, fresh legs, showing them, driving 
well into the Algeria half on his own and taking a shot from range. He's gone out for a... Throw deep in the Algeria territory. Dharma Traore-esque run there, driving through the midfield as though it didn't exist. And the difference fresh legs can make. Such a tiring night of football. Algerian free kick to go into five minutes of additional time. Still time yet, it's time to end this in normal time. Like a manager or mind, as long as they get the result they want, they surely rather have, rather avoid the drama of and stress of extra time potentially penalties. Ben Lamry, not sure what else he could do there. Giving away a Cameroon corner. Substitute Kunde over to take it. And something for rarity for Cameroon. Corner kicks in this game. One in the first half, lead to the opening goal. Can another in the second lead to the winner? Put in by Kunde, flicked on. Another acrobatic clearance. But it won't matter as it will be an Algerian free kick. To Wamba, appealing for something. High foot on Ben Lamry. The foul. So I will have to move out the way. So the decision isn't changing. And now Atal on the left. Back again, Belayli running on down the left wing. It's a free kick in a dangerous spot. A few of these early on. One from the training ground didn't work out. And another shortly after struck the wall. Can they do anything with this one? Mares not over to take it this time. It's just Belaeli and Benassa. Plenty waiting in the middle. Slomani there. Would love to get the winner if that ball gets anywhere near him. It'll be Belaeli to take. He actually finds Benyada. His cross blocked. Appealing. Again, for something. Most likely a handball. The referee not interested. Nigeria have it back in their own half. Going long, out back towards Benyada. It's a good ball. And one, a three, no, one throw. As we head towards the final 30 seconds. Benayali. Nice feet, falling Toko as it can be, looking for Mares, and winning a corner, which will likely be final chance of regular time. Nigerian fans still up for it, taken short. Mares delivers it in, cleared away by Ongla. That is 95 minutes on the clock, hooked back in, 
Little ball through to Anana. And there is the final whistle for the 90. We'll go to extra time. The drama not over yet. 1 0 the score on the night. 1 0 also the score in the first leg. There'll be at least another 30 minutes of football to come. Will either team go out to try and win it? Or will we see more of what we've seen in the last 15 or 20 minutes? Both sides not wanting to lose rather than wanting to win. So could go to penalties. Bill Maddy rally the troops. Have plenty to say after another 45 minutes watching from the sidelines. Instructions to Benny Adder, the right back currently. Both sets of players visibly exhausted from their 95 minutes already. They'll have to pick themselves up and go again for another 30. On this humid evening. At the Mustafa Chaka Stadium. Still just the three substitutes used so far, potentially being saved for extra time with extra time in mind. We'll surely see some more now, especially considering the amount of players currently hitting the deck, breathing heavily. Nigerian fans still play, making plenty of noise. Yeah, 30 minutes more entertainment. I'm sure if offered a 0-0 draw and a place in the World Cup, they would have gladly taken it. But as it stands, away goals will now no longer count for this extra time period. That worry... It's not relevant anymore for Algeria. A second goal for Cameroon would have been killer. They thought they had one, one point. And a, a brilliant double save by Rice and Bolly. VAR check proving that there was nothing held to hand during the two shots. Now, all square, back to square one once again. Just a straight fight over 30 minutes. See if we can find a winner without resorting to spot kicks. Still animated, Belmadi, 46 year old from Algeria, in charge of his home side, his own nation. Same for Rigobert Song, also Cameroonian. Former member of the national side, now in charge of it. So in addition, as mentioned, Ghana and Senegal have secured their place at the 2022 Qatar World Cup. In the earlier kickoffs in the later ones. We also have some full-time whistles. Morocco have beaten the Demo Democratic Republic of Congo 4-1 on the night, 5-2 on aggregate, to book their place in Qatar. And 
the nil-nil draw between Tunisia and Mali. Sees a 1-0 result on aggregate and Tunisia secure their spot at the World Cup. So only one place left for the African nations. It's either going to be Algeria or Cameroon. We'll find out over the next 30 minutes or potentially more. Andre Onana returning to his spot between the sticks. Rice and Bolly already there. So the referee blows the whistle. Away we go, the first period of extra time. This third round World Cup qualification game. It's a substitute, Pierre Kunde. For a ball forward, not finding anyone. Mani bringing it down well, laying it off to Belayili. He's from the other on the right, looking for options. Cut out. Slamani with a flick on the back of his heel, but not quite falling where he wanted it to. Cameroon come away with it. And he briefly mislaid. Atal. Belayili cutting inside. Looking for Mares, but not finding him. Ball keeps coming back though. Delivered in towards Slimani. He gets his head to it. Finds the roof of the net. Another big chance in the opening minutes of a period here in Algeria. It's the same in the second half. Another good delivery from Beniada. Slimani. The kind of delivery and chance he dreams of between the two defenders, not able to keep it down. Onana fixed to the spot, relieved to see it land on the top of his net. Nigeria on a free kick. The ball will go back towards the Cameroon goal once again. Still not being pressed. Algerian back three, overly. Tawamba making a token effort at least now, more so than in the final dying embers of the 90. This could well be the pace of the next 28 or so minutes in these kind of situations with so much on the line. Nobody wants to be the man to make the mistake much as many of them will want to be the hero. Tiredness plays a part as well, of course. Here is Tawamba. Tukul Gambi making a run ahead. He said, look to lay it off to Ongla. Have a free kick instead. Tug of the shirt from Ben Debka. Substitute, another substitute. Surprised to not see any changes at the start of the extra time. Delivered in by another substitute. Good day. Cameroon 
showing a little bit more than they did in the final 20. The finding Toko Akambi lays it back. Now out to the right. Cut out. Nigeria will look to break. And it is Atal on the left looking for support. Slamani making his way into the box. Atal still has it, lays it off. Belaili with the shot, blocked. Toko Akambi winning it back and breaking away himself. He has Toamba on his left, finds him. Pende, Cameroon retreat back towards the goal line. Reprieve. Pass it around at the back. Pende. Gadu plays it long, but nobody there. Had a very unpleasant first 45 minutes. Gadu dealing with Mares, a slip, which allowed Slimani in as well. But no damage done. Still a clean sheet as things stand. And had less involved in the second 45, whilst still having to defend along with the rest of his Cameroonian back line. All the way back to Mboli. That double save all the more crucial now. Those things may have not worked exactly the same. The second goal there for Cameroon would have been surely curtains for Algeria's night. Belaili moved over towards the right. And spent the first 90 on the left. But kicking it straight out of play. We feel we'll finally get another Algerian substitution. Atal making way. Ahmed Tuba, the man to replace him. So now two changes for each side. More fresh legs for a wing back. Always a good idea. And here is Tuba delivering it in towards Lamani. And he's found him. And he's found the net. Instant impact from the substitute. Not instant, but a huge impact from Slimani. He came close with a header earlier on. Could only find the roof of the net. Once again, got between the two Cameroon centre-backs and this time found the bottom corner of the net. Sent the home fans wild. Onana claiming it's come off an arm, wants VAR, this looks furious. It's a good cross. It's hard to see from there. This is the angle. Could be a shoulder, if it is a shoulder, doesn't necessarily look to be low enough down to be classed as a handball. The AR will, of course, check it. If anything, it may have struck the hand. Castelletto. The AR is checking. 
Slimani would rather they didn't. We wait. As do the Algerians, as do the Cameroonians, with bated breath. Slimani claiming disbelief that it's being checked. Free is going to look at the monitor, it would appear. The first time tonight. Well, a lot resting on this decision. The AR team clearly deeming it worthy of a second look. Best angle, this is the better one. It is quite low down. It does appear to strike the upper arm. And it's ruled out. No goal. We remain at 1-1 one, one on aggregate, 1-0 on the night. Slimani is denied his moment of heroism and the fans Showing their disbelief and their displeasure. I don't want to see that. Not sure what it is exactly raining down on the out, outer stretches of the pitch. There are plenty of them. Manana waiting to take what is now a Cameroon free kick from within his own six yard box. Now into what will be final five minutes of the first period of extra time. Quite a long check. Obviously the celebrations using up valuable minutes. We'll have another substitution as well. For Cameroon. Correction on the number is Guet coming off. And finally, Vincent Abubakar, the AFCON top scorer, golden boot winner. Not a bad substitute to be able to bring on. We not risked from the start. But deemed necessary now. There is a man who'd like to get on the end of a chance at this kind of stage of a game. Bubaka is going to be up there. Thirty-year-old currently plying his trade at Al Nazar. An incredible Afghan tournament. Poot is the man for the big stage. Now look to send his side to the biggest stage of all. It's a Cameroon player down on the turf currently. Referee not stopping play. Now Jury have it, Slimani laying it off. On the left, it's Benassa brought down by Fai. Trying to take a quick free kick again, the referee not having it. Are still shining in the eyes of Onana. The 
Benassa and Belaili. Standing over it. Belaili to put it in. No, lays it to the edge. Mares with space. Turns back. To Benny Edder on the right. Delivers in another good ball. And another header. Another save this time by Onana. It may have been Slimani again. Onana may have had some nervy moments earlier on in the game. But he's produced the goods when it's really mattered. The only time he has been beaten. You see, it's proven to be a handball. Here is that man, Slimani. Bring it into the box. Castelletto would rather. It's uh, Nuhu. Oh, and straight into the box. Missed by Onana this time. And now into additional time of the first half of stoppage time. Extra time, rather. Mares with the ball on the edge of the box, finding Benny Adder again. Another delivery into a dangerous area. Foul by Mares. Reprieve for Cameroon. It'll be two minutes of additional time. Stretcher called. It's Vanessa who's down. Seemingly getting to his feet. Referee cancelling the stretcher. Waving Benessa to get on with it. Slimani still looking rather frustrated. His moment is denied. Chance maybe for Cameroon. So can be on the edge of the box. Kunde with a wild shot. Miles high and wide. Seem that knew who is playing at left back, as suspected earlier. Abu Bakar now very much up top. And that is the end of the first half of extra time. Plenty of drama in just four and just 15 minutes, excuse me. Another final word there from Slimani to the referee. Still await a winner. Nigeria have had the ball in the net twice tonight. Neither has counted. One in the second half ruled out for offside against Slimani. And then the same man heading home, but rather not heading home as it would transpire. In fact, arming home and the goal denied for handball still just the two substitutes used per side just 15 minutes potential penalties left do the managers now start to think about which players they want on to take those penalties or do they try and make a change that will mean that we don't get there at all a short break between the two periods of extra time. Players now being taken on board some fluids. Heading back out for the final 15 minutes. Open play. 
Van Maddy still with plenty to say. Rigobert Song seemed a little quieter than his opposite number throughout the game. Will it be third time the charm for Slimani? Offside and handball. Not sure what the perfect hat trick of disallowed goals is. He's two thirds of his way there. Out of his net twice, still holding on to a clean sheet though. And he's made plenty of important saves as well. And here we go, final 15. The referee blowing his whistle for the fourth time to start a period of football tonight. Something will have to give one of these sides. Will leave tonight with a place in the World Cup. One will have to go home and try again in four years. Bellaley brought down by Kunde. Having a free kick, decent position. Bellaeli to take it. Interesting one, this. Almost a corner from a different angle. Not something you often see. Maybe tricky to deal with from a defensive point of view. Slamani in there again. It's delivered towards him. Onana, I think, flicking it over. Rather than flicking it wide. It will be another corner. A dangerous position there. Cameroon players claiming the goalkeeper didn't touch it. But it will be another corner. Mahrez delivering it into the near post. Missed by his target and cleared by the defender. Way back. And the other. Now on the left, seemingly. So that's just the knock on effect of the corner. There's now Tuba back on the left. Free kick away of Algeria Belaili once again on the turf, taken quickly. It's Tuba finding Belaili, who's got up to his feet. And Benassa. Mares looking for options. Turning, finding Beniada. Customary right wing back roll. We'll have another substitution. Ben Ayali. He's not been involved tonight. Finally making way for a long night's work and Rashid Ghazal, the man, to replace him. Delay in proceedings here. Gael Andua is down, potentially in need of treatment. He's up to his feet just as the medics make their way on with the stretcher. The referee making it clear that he will have to leave the pitch. Get the impression more and more Cameroon are now playing for the spot kicks. 
Algeria with the momentum for most of this extra period. Indeed, much of the match. Cameroon took their chance. Maybe got a little lucky in the marginal calls. That prevented both Algerian goals. But neither was wrong. And the scoreboard doesn't lie. Another substitution. John Anana, brother of goalkeeper Andre. There's the appeals for handball. It's just a corner. Just Ganego will also make his way onto the pitch. Tawamba, the man, sent to the subs bench. Delivered in. Flicked on by Onana, his first contribution. But back in. Again by Beniada. And an effort. A testing effort. Benessa dealt with by Andre Onana. One brother dealing with the first. And the other with the second. Great strike. Decent parry by the goalkeeper. He's heading just inside the post, I think. Goalkeeper take the goal kick, send it long. It's confirmation on Dua is the man to be replaced by Jean Arena. Algeria again. Tuba getting it back. Cameroon totally camped in their own half at this point. Eight minutes to play. No more substitutes left for Cameroon. All five now used. As they break forwards with those fresher legs. Mares guilty of the foul. Tucking back on Nuhu. Two substitutes left potentially for Algeria to utilize. But perhaps Belmadi likely to change considering the current momentum of play. Oh, the foul on Mares. A tug from Michael Ngadu. It's been a long old night marking Mares. He's done a decent job. And City star. Not with too many headline moments. A couple of long range efforts, nothing particularly testing for Onana. Delivered in, and another save by Onana. It's Bedran, I think, with the header. Totally free again, and the feet of Onana saving his team once again. Close call for the offside. Maybe just creeping off as Marara has delivered the free kick. And the PSO. And to take the free kick, but nonetheless, another great save with his feet. 
a crucial time. Opposite so number, Mbolli. Both keepers wearing the number 23, interestingly. say it's been through a lack of trying that Algeria haven't scored tonight. Come close so many times in a variety of ways and here they come again. This time it's the substitute Rashid Ghazal. Referee pointing for a corner. Mares is saying how about a penalty? I'd rather get one than have to deal with five in a few minutes' time. Is it coming together? Gazelle still getting up. Corner delivered in, headed away by Abu Bakr. Mares lifting it back in, blocked. We'll go again. This one over the post. Manana maybe losing his bearing slightly there. Yep, hitting the deck, having run into the post seemingly. Maddy unimpressed. May have been a yellow card. Get confirmation soon. Uh, and uh, clearly fine to continue. And the goalkeeper obviously not required to leave the pitch. There, he did receive a yellow card. His trip to the ground won't bother him too much. Unlikely to get another in the next three minutes. No chance of any sledging, anything along those lines in the shootout. If it is to come, though, can't risk being sent off at that most crucial of times. Again, backs to the wall for Cameroon. Out to the left. And there is Tuba playing it forward to Gazal, his fellow substitute, taking on the role of Belaeli in being the left wing and also putting the deck in the penalty area. And he'll now take the set piece as well from the corner, delivered in. And the header, and it's in. Surely the winner. So many headers through the night. And it's Ahmed Tuba. The left wing back, who seemingly found the net. And this one surely will count. Cramp to deal with. For Slimani. That will subside. And the joy won't for quite a while. 
A good corner, free at the back stick. Nobody picking up the substitute. Played a part in winning the corner. And left totally free to head home. What will surely send Algeria to the World Cup. Harsh on Onana, made so many saves, but eventually the dam has broken. Slimani still on the ground. Getting a yellow card for his troubles, Cameroonians telling him, please get up, says Abu Bakr. There'll surely be some additional time on the end of this extra time period. Cameroonians can't believe it, they've come so close. Shaq Pilfadil due to come on. So you'd imagine for Slimani. Four minutes of additional time it would appear. But we still seem to be a fair way from getting this game back underway. Yep, Slimani being carried off in the cart. Fans delirious. We've seen their team score in the 119th minute. There is Belfordil on for Slimani. How many minutes will we get of additional time? It's still just a four. One and a half of that have already elapsed. Surely a little extra will be added on for that. And here come Cameroon. All hands to the pump now. Tempers flaring. A yellow card for Benietta and Belfordil. Having just come onto the pitch. High drama. I apologies, Nuhu and Belfadil. Just 90 seconds seemingly remaining. We shall see. But certainly. Onana going forwards. Well, we get even more late drama into the danger area. Punched by Mboli. Cleared into Rosed. For the Algerian player down on the ground. Looks like it's Mandy. It is. Referee saying play on. Delivered back into the danger area, flicked on, and the scored! Oh, it's incredible! It's Cole Toko Akambi! Would you believe it? In the 123rd minute, we've waited almost two hours with just the one goal, and then two have come along. In the space of four minutes, Algeria thought they were there, thought they were through. Rigobert Song thought otherwise. And Carl Toko Akambi, the man from Lyon, 29 year old, had a great season for the club side, is now the right man in the right spot. The flick on by Michael Ngadu falling to the feet of Toko Akambi 
An unerring finish. Nothing Mboli could do. Defence had switched off. It would appear we will get a penalty shootout after all. Having said that, who knows? Algeria with yet another kickoff. Two all. There we go. Cameroon ecstatic. Algeria can't believe it. Belmadi in tears. Inconsoled, but is surely inconsolable. Cameroon win on away goals. As out, <laughs> as dramatic as a finish as you will see. 119th minute. Ahmed Tuba thinking he'd got the winner. But Carl Toko Akambi coming along in the last minute of the additional time of stoppage time of the second leg of the third round. You won't see drama like this in many other sports or in many other football games. What can you say? Have to feel for Jamal Belmadi. He took his national side to the 2019 Africa Cup of Nations. He thought he'd taken them to the World Cup finals and he was a few seconds away from having done so. The away goals also counting in extra time. And Carl Toko Akambi, 29 year old, born in Paris, playing for Lyon. There with the winner. 124th minute. The polar opposite ends of emotion there, but for the two coaches, Rigobert Song over the moon. Pure anguish for Jamel Bilmadi. For a long, long qualifying campaign. They could see themselves in Qatar this winter, but it wasn't to be. Came into the match, the 1 0 advantage. Saw that disappear through Maxim, Eric Maxim, Chuba Motting's goal early, halfway through the first half. Thought they found the winner in the 119th minute. But they had not dominated the match. 65% of possession. Got Tetchi at the end, seven yellow cards shared between the two sides. But it's Cameroon who will go to the World Cup.